Okay, welcome back. While we're still down here at the river, I uh, got my lure caught in a tree, lost it, so I'll have to re rig right here. So, I'm gonna take a little break from the fishing. We're gonna come over, talk to you guys about the conceptual framework, or at least introduce parts of the conceptual framework. So, um, the conceptual framework, we're gonna talk primarily, we're initially, probably right now, we'll talk about why we need it, how we develop it, and quick overview before we actually launch into the actual conceptual framework, which we'll do here in a minute. But the conceptual framework, why do we need it? So as we talked about, um, we need a coherent set of standards um, in order to um, have consistent accounting and to have it be meaningful and useful to investors in making their capital allocation decisions. So we need that. Well, to do that, we should probably have some standards or some foundation on which to base new standards. So, and that should be somewhat, those standards should, it should actually start making sense. So we don't want standards uh, to account for inventory to be vastly different than say accounts receivable. They're both operating assets. They're both current, end up on the balance sheet. We generally want the same foundation so that when we look at an asset, we know what we're, kind of what roughly what we're looking at um, and what's included in there. So those uh, help develop so the conceptual framework helps develop a coherent set of standards it also helps solve new and emerging problems so for instance take revenue recognition which is, was a hot topic a while back and continues to be a very difficult area but when we had well, with the advent of technology companies revenue recognition totally changed right with manufacturing and sale of goods it was pretty straightforward when we recognized revenue we, recognize revenue when the product was shipped um, or when the service was performed. Well, when you have a technology company and they're selling the right to use something for so software, for instance, and sometimes that, that the right to use that software is embedded in a piece of hardware, like let's say an iPhone, right? An iPhone runs on uh, Apple's proprietary software. Um, Apple, they will say that they're a, they're a software company, not a hardware company. So, they have software that they're selling, but it's attached to a device. Um, so how do they recognize the revenue for that? Is it when when they sell it? Do they wait to recognize that over some period of time? For instance, the period of time at which they're willing to correct and make changes to or update, guarantee updates to the software. So those are new emerging issues that having a conceptual framework to go back on and say, okay, well, how do we define revenue? When should a company get to recognize its revenue based on our conceptual framework? We can then say, okay, in this case, we're to, we determine companies can revenue as recogni re recognize revenue at this point in time or at a later point in time, or they can recognize it now. So those are some benefits of having a conceptual framework. Now the conceptual framework, I believe it still has um, eight. Um, well, we're up to number eight, although we keep overriding them. So there's, financial uh, statements of financial accounting concepts or SFACs for business enterprises. Um, they generally start with five, which is recognition and measurement. Six is elements of statements. Seven is cash flow information. Eight went back and overrode one and two. Um, and that's objectives and general purpose financial reporting. So, and that's what gave us our qualitative characteristics that we'll talk about here uh, in a little bit. So we have several levels of the conceptual framework. The first level is the basic objective. We talked about the objective uh, last week or in an earlier video when we talked about what's the objective of financial reporting. Without an objective, we don't know what we're trying to shoot at. It's hard to hit a target, you don't know where it is. So first start is the objective. What are we trying to accomplish? The second one is qualitative characteristics and elements. So to achieve that objective, what should these financial statements possess? Or contain. This is where we talked about the attributes in a previous video. The attributes provide these qualitative characteristics and elements of the financial statement um, that help us achieve our first level or our basic objective. And lastly, we have the recognition, measurement, and disclosure concept. So how are we going to kind of implement this process? So we have our objective, we have what, what quality, uh, 
what qualitative characteristics that we need to achieve or seek to achieve to, to uh, or seek to have to reach that objective. And then lastly, it's kind of the implementation. What's this end up actually looking like when we start actually recognizing revenue or reporting or measuring assets and liabilities? So those are our three levels. Uh, I'm gonna utilize kind of this hierarchy, it, uh, upside down triangle um, that um, the, the, the Wiley uh, book presents stuff as. Starting at the bottom, uh, we have our objective, which is to provide uh, useful information to decision makers. The middle level, we have our qualitative characteristics and our elements, and at kind of the top level, the third level, we have the our assumptions, principles, and constraints. So, starting, we're going to go. We'll work through the objective um, in this in this video, and then we'll probably leave the qualitative characteristics elements uh, for a future video. So, the objective of financial reporting, uh, slightly reworded. So. Uh, from what we talked about in an earlier video, but the objective of financial reporting is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential equity investors, lenders, and other creditors, frankly, to anyone who wants to use the information, in making their decisions about providing resources to the entity. So we talked a lot about capital providers. Those are the resources being provided to the entity. But this is kind of, I'd say, the formal definition that comes out of these concept statements of what we do. So to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential equity investors, lenders, and other creditors in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. That's our objective. With that, I'm going to finish rigging up this rod and we'll cover the rest of the material in a minute when I can get back to fishing. So moving on to the qualitative characteristics of accounting. So we have some qualitative characteristics. These qualitative characteristics, um, I, the FASB identified these qualitative characteristics um, that help distinguish good information from bad information. Now, ironically, these characteristics could be applied pretty much to all information. There's nothing unique to accounting about these qualitative characteristics. For instance, reliability. Um, well, all information you use needs to be somewhat reliable, otherwise you probably shouldn't be using it. So these qualitative characteristics aren't unique to accounting, but they are a nice organized way to start to, to think about things and to help us understand whether, okay, are we, uh, what are we sacrificing if we try to, um, for new standards that we have? What's the objective and what sacrifice are we making? And that kind of, kind of brings them all together in that sense. So these, oh, um, Qualitative characteristics. We have our second level of this, our fundamental concepts, vision usefulness. So we're back to but this really aims at our objective, useful in basically the financial statements being useful to decision makers. So we have relevance and faithful representation of the broad categories. Within relevance, we have what determines relevance is it has to have predictive and confirmatory value as well as pretty much be material, which means it just matters. So predictive value it'll help us predict how the company is going to do in the future. That's important. That's what investors are basing a large portion of their investment on is predicting or determining, okay, I think this company is going to do well in the future, therefore I'm going to invest in it. That's predictive value. Confirmatory value, well, to predict things, it helps to also have what happened in the past or to know, well, good grief, they've lost a ton of money. Um, or how did that, big natural disaster or say the pandemic affect the company. It helps confirm the past experience of what's happened with the company. That could, so those three elements, predictive value, confirmatory value, and materiality, give us relevance. If we can achieve those three things, we generally would say the financial, statement, the financial information or financial reporting is relevant to the decision makers that we're concerned about. Um, next is faithfully represented. Faithfully represented means it has to be complete. We need to have financial statements that are complete, that have the information in there that investors can use, and that 
it has it all in there. Companies don't have the option of not um, reporting things. For instance, liabilities, they have to report them. They must be complete. So the completeness is critical. They also need to be neutral. Management is generally biased. So that's whatever management's biased. They should be biased. They should think more, they should think more highly of their company than anybody else. They're running it. I want them to be very positive. However, when it comes to financial reporting, I want them to be honest um, and not have their overly rosy perspective of the world or overly ambitious hopes for what the company can achieve baked into the financial statements. So that is uh, neutrality. Uh, next, we're, next we were, are going to have free from error. Well, free from error or correct should be, should pretty much go without too much uh, discussion. Obviously, financial statements are incorrect. They have less value. Um, they are not faithfully represented in that case. Um, so we need financial statements to be free from error. Um, now, as I mentioned before, we have financial Accounting provides one piece of the information environment. There's a lot of others. Um, the benefit of that is it provides investors lots of information. The downside is management can utilize their other means of communication to communicate things that would be contrary to, or the worst case is when management presents things that look like they're accounting information when they're actually not. So there's instances where companies talk about, say, their bookings or their orders, um, uh, Uber, uh, sorry, not Uber, uh, Tesla is notorious for talking about the, the order flow. Well, order flow is great and it definitely is useful information, but it should not be confused with an accounting number. It is not accounting. Accounting does not have a figure for orders. Um, now, when they actually complete the sale and deliver the vehicle, and then, Tesla's case, well, that represents revenue or some portion of revenue, depending on how Uber recognizes their revenue, which has got to be confusing. But um, orders aren't accounting. So that could be deceptive um, if companies or investors interpret, uh, interpret non-accounting figures or non-accounting statements by management as accounting and give them the same weight, which they shouldn't, and it causes all kinds of problems when they do. We have our um, enhancing qualities. So if we wanted to talk a little bit more about our enhancing qualities, comparability, comparability is something we, we'd like to have. We strive for it. Um, it is, it enhances the value we're providing to financial statements. Now, just to make something comparable is not an, is not an objective in of itself. It's an enhancing quality. The more comparable we can make it, the better. Similarly with verifiability. Now, verifiability is is critical in some cases, but just because something's not verifiable doesn't mean it can't go in the financial statements. There's a lot of liabilities, um, especially contingent liabilities, that the figure or the amount is not verifiable. Um, we have a guess of what we think it might be, uh, in terms of the amount, or we have maybe an estimate, but no one can verify what the what the outcome of a litigation is going to be, or verify what um, we expect the cost of warranty repairs in the future to be. Like we can't verify those amounts. We can provide reasonable estimates, but they can't be verified. So, the but any to the extent we can verify things enhances the quality. Um, also, timeliness. We've talked a little bit about timeliness. Sale information is not very useful. So in terms of decision usefulness, we don't want sale information. And lastly, understandability. People need to be able to understand what we're actually reporting. If they can't understand it, it's not achieving its objective. So those are our enhancing qualities. And that wraps up our basic elements. Um, well, that wraps up our qualitative characteristics. Moving on to basic elements. These are just the stuff we put in financial statements. Like, i.e., how are we going to organize things? We're going to organize them by, say, assets, liabilities, owners, equity, expenses, revenue. These are elements of the financial statements. We will be diving way more into what 
elements are, the definitions of all these things, as we progress um, in, uh, in the material that we're covering. So I'm not gonna dwell too extensively on these, uh, just kind of have a familiarity with at least what the list is at this point. Like, no, like, okay, these are the elements. These are the kind of the things that we're talking about. Don't worry too much about understanding exactly what they mean at this point. So that's everything up. Now for the, in the next session, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the kind of the output of level three stuff, uh, recognition, measurement uh, items. But that pretty much wraps us up for this session. Uh, have a great day. God bless. And I will talk to you next time. Thank you.